What's going on? What's going on? I saw a video and um, it was kind of a thing where um, they were trying to do a comparison uh, between um, Al Heyman and Bob Arum and basically trying to correlate them as being the same kind of being the same person. You know, it's basically all, oh, you know, they still have, you know, the whole of career and you got to do what they say and, and this and that. And the reality of the situation is these guys, they don't no, they're complete different individuals. Their way of doing business, their way of the way of operating, is a hundred percent completely different. There's nothing similar about these two guys at all, zero. You know, and you can see that just also with the way that you know certain fighters were with Bob Arum, and then how differently they were handled once they got with Al Heyman. You know, um, Bob Arum, his only focus is making his money. That's it. You know, and his whole thing is, especially if you're a young fighter and you sign with them, is let me give you a big, huge check up front, you know, in order to get you to sign me. And I'll F you up in the back end. That's what his whole philosophy is. And then he's all about pinching numbers. Basically, he's like, all right, I'm going to be able to take this much from the gate. I'm going to be able to take this much from the television rights. And I'm going to make this amount of money. So I'm going to pay this fire fighter this. And that's what he does. And he'll basically just rob the fighters when it comes to all that back end money. Pretty much the way that you know promoters have been doing so for for generations, for decades, you know, for over a hundred plus years. Let's just give them that upfront check, but they just rob them big time with everything else. And his whole focus is what's in the best interest of my company. You know, what's going to work best for me and top rank, the fighter, and what's best for him comes secondary. It's not on the. It's not primary. You know. It's not primary whatsoever. Kind of like Donito Donair, who was offered over, you know, three plus million dollars to go fight Mares, you know, on, I guess it was on um, on Golden Boy. They're like, nah, F that. You know what I'm saying? You're going to fight Rick and the Alpha one point in this instead. He would do things like that as well. Or, you know, even though this fighter might be able to go over there and make a substantial amount of money, it's like, nah, let me keep that fight. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to like, Let's say it's someone like a, uh, like um, Teofimo Lopez. People are like, oh, him and Tank Javante Tank Davis should fight. He's not gonna do a Javante Tank Davis fight. He's not gonna do that because why would he do that when he can just have um, Teofimo Lopez fight, um, go up and maybe fight a Taylor in a big huge fight instead? Why would he do that when he can have uh, Lopez just fight Lomachenko again? And he can and he would rather, you know, make less money, you know, doing that. You know, in in the in the short term, but be able to if he can keep this fighter, be able to make a substantial amount of money long term with the fighter. The Floyd Mayweather fight. It was the same thing with Manny Pacquiao. The reason he didn't want that fight to be done was just due to the fact that he knew over a long period of time he was going to be able to surpass the amount of money that he would have made on that particular fight. You know, and then he also effed Manny Pacquiao. We heard the stories of Manny Pacquiao being upset and pissed off. You know, when he saw the check that he got. We saw Floyd Mayweather that night. He was cheesing. I also remember. I remember when they were talking about the negotiations and, 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 and everything was all said and done. And Floyd just coming out like, yo, they're doing that boy dirty. Yo, they're doing that boy dirty. You know, from that aspect of the contract. You know, from that side of the, you know, how Top Rank was doing things. That's what Bob Aram's all about. That's all he's about, period. You know, it's all about him. And if and when it's time you want to leave or when, you know, your contract's coming up, he'll put you on the shelf. You see what he did to Mikey Garcia. You see what he did to um, uh, Jesse Vargas. It was the same thing. That's why you didn't hear it. You didn't do it was a period of point, uh, period of time when you didn't see Jesse Vargas. That was the reason. You know, he was, he was trying to get out of that contract, and Bob Aaron wouldn't let him, so he had to sit down. Even Manny Pacquiao, he tried to hold Manny Pacquiao, you know, into threatening other people like, "Hey, if you do a business with Manny Pacquiao, you know, I'm going to fire, you know, fire, you know, uh, uh, litigation against you because he's still with Top Rank, even though he wasn't." You know, it wasn't until Manny Pacquiao signed with, uh, with Al Heyman that Al Heyman, they put a, a stop to that real quick. You know, this is what he does. You know, it's all about it's all about him and it's all about his company first. Al Heyman's not about that. Al Heyman's all about the fighter. Al Heyman, what he does is all these, these funds that the promoters used to be able to take a lot of, he'll actually give a substantial amount of that to the fighters. He's not taking 30% like Bob Aram's taking 30%. You know, depending on how much money you, if you're not making enough money, he won't take anything. So all these lower fighters that are only making fifty thousand, a hundred thousand, one hundred twenty-five, one hundred fifty thousand, he's not taking any money out of that purse. 
He's giving them their whole freaking check. He's literally giving them their whole check. Here, take his whole check. He's helping out fighters. Uh, uh, Andy Ruiz, stuck on top rank. Couldn't get out. That man paid $800,000 to get Andy Ruiz out of that deal. Never asked for any of that money back. Didn't ask for any of it back. He didn't. Didn't ask for any of that money back. That's what he does. You know, there's a reason why um, uh, Santa Cruz named his son Al Heyman. Who's naming their kid Bob Aaron? Mara is talking about when I was with Golden Boy, it was like I worked at McDonald's. When I was with Al Heyman, it's like I became a lawyer. This is what he does. When he came to Dante Wilder, Dante Wilder filing for the IBF championship and the unification would have been what was in, in, in PBC's best interest. But I think, you know, whatever the hell that dude's name was. But soon as, you know, um, he, that man was offered seven plus million dollars to go to the UK to fight. Uh, to fight, um, what's his name? To fight um, Anthony Joshua. That's what was in the best interest of that fighter. So he said, you go ahead and go make your bread. Because that was in his best interest. And he let him go ahead and do that. When he, when Bob Aaron would have done that, Bob Aaron would like, oh, hell no. You find my champion in unification and we getting these two belts under that dude. Because, you know, that's what's in best, his best interest. But Al Heyman and them, they did what's in the best interest, interest of Martin. That's what he did. You know, this guy... He's giving up huge portions of television rights. He's making sure these fighters are getting huge portion of the gates, huge portion of concessions, huge portions of the gates. He's making sure they get all that. That's why they get paid so much. People always talking about, oh, they're not gonna be able to sustain paying these fighters so much. But he's not paying, the, the amount of money that's in the pot is the same. It's the same amount of money that's in the pot. The only difference is you know, where it's getting distributed to. It's just that instead of the the, uh, the the promoter, you know, jipping the fighter and taking all this back end bread, he's just giving that to the fighters. So and so if anybody says that, you know, oh, he's overpaying the fighters. No, he's not overpaying the fighters. You know, and to say to, to for the guys that are putting their lives in the line, going into that ring, you know what I'm saying, getting all messed up where God knows, you know, what their futures are gonna, you know, gonna be, to say anybody to say that they're overpaid is is asinine. That's the, it's freaking moronic and it's asinine. They should be getting paid the most. Then Al Heyman and them, they take their 15% or whatever. They still make bread. They're making money. But they're making sure that those fighters are getting this huge portion of money that they're making before. And people are saying, oh, well, the pay-per-views are so low. They're not doing a million. Most pay-per-views don't do a million. People really need to educate themselves and freaking go look at the history of freaking pay-per-views. There's always one or two fighters in a certain generation or time frame that does a million pay-per-views. But most fighters don't do. Most fights don't do that. Most fights were 300,000, 250,000, 300,000, 400,000. That's what was most that was what a normal pay-per-view usually was it's just every once in a while a fighter will come along that could do that million like a mike tyson like a floyd mayweather even oscar de la hoya wasn't necessarily hitting those high numbers like that that's not normal that's that's an abnormality you know and when the, these pay-per-views it's not like they're paying these dudes a, a crazy amount of money they're giving them you know, paying them within that structure of what's being made. They're doing good gates, the fights that have been put on the pay-per-view. They've, you know, they've been doing that 250 or whatever thousand. They're, they're getting their, that, the additionals, the extras from that. They're getting additionals, extras from, from, from the gate, from the, from the concessions, from the merchandise, from the people who are, um, who are, uh, the sponsors. That's where all the additional money is coming from, from the venue putting up bread so you can actually, so you can even, so you'll come to their venue and fight. That's where all the money is coming from. And he makes sure these fighters get it. You think Bob Aram is just, they're fighting in his little ass venues, and he's having fight after fight after fight, and, uh, undisputed, with only in front of a thousand people. You think if he could make more money by having it in a, big, a bigger venue, he wouldn't do that? Is that hotel is paying him a substantial amount of money to have those fights in that hotel? Whether it be the MSG, Madison, the, whether, whether it be the, um, the, uh, the casinos or just the hotels. There's a reason why that fight for Undisputed was in front of such little people. Bob Arum made a killing off that fight. He made a boatload of money off that fight. But those fighters didn't see that bread. Those fighters didn't see that bread. If that was a PBC event, those fighters would have saw that bread. They would have saw that. That's the difference. He's teaching these guys how to take care of their money if you want to know. 
You know, they'll teach you how to make your money off of real estate. That's why the guys like Killing, Aquilin, are, are retired and own a ridiculous amount of real estate. You know, because they've been taught that, along as with other fighters as well, a Danny, a Danny Garcia, guys like that, where he will teach you how to. And like, uh, what's it called? Earl Spence. Earl Spence said the reason why they signed to him was because, yay, yeah, he was talking about the future. He was talking about retirement. And he wasn't giving you that big boy money up front. He was giving you a little money up front, you know. But in the long run, you are better off with the back end. He's like, I'm not going to give you this crazy amount of money right now. But as we go, as you progress in your career, I'll make sure you actually get what you're supposed to get. You know, from all these different places that, you know, that these funds come from. And that's what he did with them. So somebody else might have got a substantial amount of money up front, but they ended up in the long run not making as much as an Earl Spence. There were guys, I wouldn't mention names, that were doing good. Like, hey, this guy's getting paid a million a fight. This guy's getting paid $2 million a fight. You know, where, um, what's it called? Where Javante Tank Davis necessarily wasn't doing that. But once the Javante Tank Davis got to a certain point, he got all the money that other dude got. And now he's progressed past that. Getting paid substantially more. You know, because he's getting all these things that these other fighters, including that fighter, is not getting. That's the difference. So to try to say that, and is it perfect? Have we got every single fight that we wanted to get? No, but he gets most of them. But this weird thing where the man has to be perfect and do everything, get every single thing, is moronic. All the 118 pound fighters fighting each other. All the 147 pound fighters pretty much have fought each other. All the guys at 154 fought each other. We just had Undisputed for 154. You know, we just had that. And he keeps giving all these fights. Busting his tail trying to get a fight with, with you know, uh, with, with Canelo for, for Undisputed on there as well. He's trying to do all these things. And he consistently does all these things. So this is a guy who's, on multiple occasions, has put out the biggest fights in boxing. You know? This guy's the reason why we had Tyson Fury versus Dante Wilder. Why we had Ortiz versus Wilder. You know? We had a lot of fights. You know, but people want to pick and choose. We had... Let's, let's, you know, take our minds off this and bitch and complain about this. Let's take our minds off this and complain about this because he can't get every single thing done. It's moronic. And then to try to compare those two is, I'll just say it, it's asinine. Especially if you're in boxing and, and you go over boxing and you're educated with boxing and you've seen over the years how each of these two guys flow. As if, especially when it pertains to the fighters. And it pertains to all the fights we've seen. Like, think of all the fights we've seen. You know? But people just want to close their eyes from like, well, we didn't get this, this, and this one though. So forget all about all this. It's moronic. And I've said it again. I'll, one time, probably twice, three times, I'll say it again. Trying to compare those two guys as if they're the same entity is moronic. And the reason why they say talk to Al, call Al, is because they believe in that man and they trust that man because of his history. Okay, he has a long history of taking care of his fighters and looking out for them and doing what's in their best interest. And he know they know that despite what's going on with PBC, despite what's going on, what might be in the best of that, at the end of the day, they're going to look out for you. What do you want to do? And after they find out what they want to do, they're going to do what's in the best interest to, to try to help them along that. That's what he does. That's why they say call Al. Because they know he's going to look out for their best interest. Not only them, artists. Okay? The locks were doing an interview on Breakfast Club. Guess, you know, you know what? What's the they were talking about? Oh, Al Heyman, the ghost. That's what they were talking about. Okay, Cardi B, you hear talking about Al Heyman. Okay, you hear, what's it called? Drake, he talks about Al Heyman, what's it called? You know, Al Heyman, what's it called? Signature on all of my checks. You see what, what that man's doing. Why do you think he's getting all he's getting? Because he has somebody that, you know, that's educated in the music industry and knows how to get him all those things where he might have been chipped on a lot of different things. That's why, look at where Kawhi Cardi B's living. It's like that. She's living like that for a reason because of that man being able to help her. Okay, and helping to helping him being able to help her progress in her career. That's why that's happening. Patty LaBelle, no, oh, she didn't know uh what's the forget his name, RP to him, he died. I forget his name, but a fighter, you know, and he's, he's he's talking to her about you know boxing and everything he does in boxing. And she said, I don't know anything about boxing, but all I know is if you want your life to be changed, you need to contact Al Heyman. This is someone that's 50 some years old, 60 some years old. That's been an icon for, for decades. 
She's like, you want your life to be changed? You contact that man. That's what she was saying. Because that's what that man does. He puts other people ahead of him and he does what he can to change their lives. You know, that's what he does. And to, to talk bad about this man and, and trash him and try to compare him to that scumbag. I said it before, I said it again. It's moronic. It's idiotic and stupid. Like, subscribe, share. I'm out.